Hey everyone, it's Mel here, and today I want to share with you guys my story of attending Engage Summits for the very first time. If you guys don't know, Engage Summits is a luxury wedding conference where all of the top wedding vendors come together to network, learn, build relationships, and just have fun. Anyway, so I was actually there working for Derek Chan Films, who is a luxury wedding filmmaker, and it was our first time working together as well. I also got to meet one of his other main shooters, Long, and his wife, Anna, and Derek also works with his wife, Cece. So anyways, there's this whole group of us, and it was very interesting because I guess I don't really consider myself a luxury wedding filmmaker. Like, I just know that I'm very passionate about what I do, and I started working in the wedding industry ever since I was in high school. But since 2013, all the way until now, I never had my own wedding business, you know what I mean? Like, I would mainly be working for other people. So anyways, this trip was just an eye-opening experience to seeing the different types of market and also working with a different team, because I've been with my other one for over six years now. Anyways, the reason why I want to make this vlog is because I want to share my personal experience from the lens of a normal person, not as a luxury filmmaker or someone who was, you know, born into this grand world. I come from an immigrant family and I worked my way up ever since I was in high school to get to this point. So. I guess I wanted to make this video because I wanted to share with you guys that it's possible for your dreams to come true if you keep working in that direction. I never knew that destination wedding shoots were a thing a few years ago, you know? Like it just felt so out of the world and unreachable. But now that I've been doing more and more of it, I just feel like things are slowly coming together with how I envisioned my life to be when I was a kid. So anyways, I hope this video can inspire you in some way and also just show you guys the actual hard work behind all of these shoots. So yeah. <laughs> all right, hope you guys enjoy the vlog. So on the day of my flight, Marthy dropped me off early in the morning and then when I got to the airport, the line was so long. Even though I was three hours early, I still felt nervous because it was so crowded. The guy in front of me, his flight was boarding soon and we were still waiting in line. So I was sweating for him. But anyways, after a good hour or so, I finally passed through the security line. Then I bought myself a salad because I was starving. It was really expensive though. I think it was almost $20 for that one salad. But one important lesson that I learned last year is that it's okay to treat yourself sometimes. I feel like if you're too frugal with your money, you don't get to enjoy life in the present as much, if you know what I mean. Once I landed in the Bahamas, I met up with Long and Anna, and surprisingly, the conversations flowed really easily. Like, they were super kind and sweet, and it was just very easy to talk to them about topic after topic. So that was our very first time meeting, and yeah, it started off the trip on a good note. Once we passed through customs, we started to meet more people that were actually attending Engage as well. Like everyone was kind of flying in at the same time. So <laughs> that's when all the networking started already. And I was kind of standing there like, hmm, how, how should I introduce myself? Because it's not like I'm here for my own money business, you know, like I'm here working for someone else. So <laughs> anyways, I had this thing with like introductions where sometimes I feel like either I give way too much detail or I don't know how to just like cut it short because in my mind, I go so far back into the past and I'm just like, hmm, how did I start? Where did I begin? And how did I become the person that I am now? Anyways, at the airport, we were able to book a shuttle bus to bring us to the hotel and all the other people that were attending Engage boarded the same bus. So as I mentioned, the networking began already and I don't know, <laughs> sometimes like the idea of networking just sounds so tiring to me. Like I do enjoy meeting people, but other times I just feel like it can be very forced, like asking, oh, what do you do? Da, da, da. And then it's like all about status. And for me, I just 
don't really like status hierarchy and just all that comparison kind of thing. Like my core value is building genuine relationships with people, not just, oh, what can you benefit from each other or whatever. Anyways, you get my point. So on the actual bus, there was a woman who started talking to me. We talked for a little bit, but I was actually sitting by myself on like a single seater next to the window. And then she started talking to the other man next to her. And that guy, I think it was his like 30th engage or something. Okay, I don't know how long engage has been here for, but clearly like I wasn't that important because this was my first time attending and you know, the other guy was more spirit. So that conversation kind of dissipated. And then I was kind of just by myself. Um, everyone else was talking paired up or in a group, whatever, but yeah, I was completely okay with it. I just enjoyed looking out the window and was feeling very thankful to be there. I was really just trying to soak it all in and there's just something about traveling that shifts your entire perspective on the world and I really do feel like it gives you a deeper connection with yourself too, which is why I love it so much. And the elevator is so fancy, all gold. <laughs> Alright guys, gonna give you a quick room tour. Just got to the hotel. Just finished filming a quick room tour. Sunset is happening right now, so I'm starting to lose the light, but yeah. I'm starving, I haven't eaten anything since the salad this morning at 8 a.m. We're all just settling in and then we're gonna have dinner at 6.30 p.m. So I'm just gonna chill for a bit until then. <laughs> After settling in, I met up with Long and Anna for dinner. We had Thai food and bubble tea and then we took our time exploring afterwards because Derek and Cece were still in a meeting. But after they were done, we came together as a group to do some location scouting and just get a general breakdown of what was going to happen for the next three days. There's also a Toronto photographer named Joey who is good friends with Derek and I've also worked with him a few times shooting weddings back home. So he was there leading the photography team and there's just an entire group of us working together to document this entire event. I'm just chilling in bed now. It's a really dark and big room for one person. <laughs> Morning. I'm so tired. <laughs> oh my gosh. Maybe I should have stayed up late posting those stories yesterday. Uh, but look at this view. What a view to wake up to. Hair is flying everywhere. <laughs> Anyways, have to get ready. Today, um, well, every day is actually a certain theme. So this morning is going to be like an arrivals theme because it's about letting your dreams take flight. <laughs> Wait, Joey, you, you can look. No, look the other way. For the next three days, I was working hand in hand with Derek, Long, and Cece to film and edit every single day. Our job was to deliver an Instagram teaser each day, and on the last day of the event, we were going to present a same day edit highlight video that would recap the entire event. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you know that I always do same day edit weddings, so this wasn't new to me. Um, working 12 plus hours each day, shoot, edit, shoot, edit, shoot, edit. But yeah, it was nice because everyone on the team was shooting and editing collectively. It really felt like a team effort to make these videos possible. For this event, if you were to attend as a regular attendee and not as someone working, admission costs around 4.5k USD. Yeah, it's definitely an investment and to be honest, if I wasn't working, I probably wouldn't have attended Engage. Like I honestly didn't even know about this event until I was hired to shoot um, for Derek. But overall, it was genuinely really awesome to be able to meet so many different wedding vendors from across the world and being surrounded by so many talented creatives and business professionals. It was just a very empowering experience. And as we mentioned earlier, Derek Chan and his team were capturing everything on video. This is my camera gear, my sandals, 
my feet. <laughs> I'm gonna start rough cutting here on the laptop and then the party's outside. Back at the hotel, I dropped my gear and then I have to do my PCR COVID test. So they're gonna stick a swab all the way up my nose. Just finished doing my PCR test. It was so deep, oh my god, I'm like tearing up. But at least they only did one nostril. The other test I did, they did two, so yeah. <laughs> On the second night, they split us up from our core team so that we could get a chance to network with other people. So they assigned us to different restaurants. And this was my first time actually meeting a group of people and interacting with them because aside from that, I was just filming and editing them. I was honestly really nervous. Like we did introductions and my voice was kind of shaking. <laughs> I think I said something along the lines of Hi, I'm Melinda, I'm from Toronto, and I'm a wedding cinematographer. I started video editing when I was 12 years old, and then I somehow fell into the wedding industry, and then blah blah blah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to give my whole life story, but that was the gist of it. After dinner, there was a party at a nightclub, and I had a few drinks um, because everyone was drinking, and honestly, clubbing is not my scene. Like, it makes me very anxious or I don't know I'm just I can't, I can't dance you know it's so like in my life I just do not go to clubs I don't enjoy the scene but if I drink and I get buzzed a little then I don't really care anyways so I was very thankful to just be holding my camera and working there instead of actually being in the club as like a normal person <laughs> just got back to the hotel from shooting dinner in the nightclub such a rough cut so probably gonna shower and then edit and then try to get some rest before shooting again tomorrow morning. <laughs> hands up in the air, dance up, move our bodies. Hands up, we don't get everybody swaying. Girl, it's in our bloodstream, everybody's watching. There's nothing on the ground. Today is the last day of the event. I skipped breakfast again because I was tired and I wanted more sleep. But yeah, it's been pretty interesting so far. I mean, the work I do is the same. It's just different setting. Um, but yeah, I'm enjoying it and I'll update you guys more later. <laughs> For the last day of the event, there were multiple breakout sessions where people would dive deeper to learn and discuss certain topics. I was also assigned a few sessions to attend, but because I was here to work, I couldn't actually be part of any of them. Instead, I was just popping in and out of different rooms to film and edit. There was this one session that discussed multiculturalism and the background of shooting Indian weddings. I found it interesting because the speaker asked who hasn't done an Indian wedding before and half of the attendees raised their hand. In my career, I probably filmed close to 100 Indian weddings, if not more. So it made me realize that we're all experienced in different areas in the wedding industry. And just because we don't serve a particular market, it doesn't make us any less professional. Anyways, the reason I share that story is because I felt like I automatically put myself in a box of feeling young and not as good just because this was a luxury event and I typically don't serve that market. Maybe it's because I started doing weddings when I was in high school so I always felt small and that need to prove myself. It was just a good reminder that I do have experience and I do know what I'm doing too. Defining my self-worth and confidence has definitely been a journey and I should really stop putting myself down. Just got lunch. It's a grab and go. So we got these bags. And then, I love 
spirits and yeah, that stuff inside. Final event of the night. It's gonna be a huge gala, and we're gonna do the Cindy head screening. The decor for the gala. It's so beautiful. I'll show you guys in a bit. It's galaxy themed. <laughs> The whole point of collaboration is that you give and take from each other, and that's how you create things that are totally new. Who are you going to elevate today? Because when I elevate someone, it is equivalent of hugging them with my words. Change your life forever by empowering everyone around you to succeed. When I elevate you, we all rise together. That's the spirit of Engage. So today is my last day in the Bahamas. My flight is in a few hours, but I want to relax a little because I've literally been working the past three days. Yeah. <laughs> so we actually got these bath bombs for free as part of our complimentary luggage. And I decided maybe I should try one out because I never take baths at home. It smells pretty nice. Um, I think you should just drop one and then enjoy it. <laughs> it took a while to fill up this bath though. I just took the plastic off of this one. It looks like a giant candy. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens. Should I just toss it in? Okay. Whoa. Oh, what is that? The idea of taking a bath sounds relaxing, but honestly, it was such a complicated experience for me. Like I spent five to 10 minutes just trying to get the right temperature for the water. And then as soon as I got into the bathtub and I tried to lay there and relax, be all zen and whatnot. I don't know, like my body just kept slipping down and I tried to like adjust myself, push myself back up, but then I'll slip again. So I was just like derping, going in and out of the bathtub. And then afterwards, I tried to put a towel under my neck so that it would be more comfortable, like a pillow, but then I was still slipping and eventually the towel just fell into the water too. I think I maybe chilled there for like a few minutes and then I just got up and got ready. <laughs> That definitely looked a lot bougier than it actually was. After I got out of the bath, I packed my things and headed down the elevator to have breakfast with the rest of the team before I flew back to Toronto. Some of the others stayed a bit longer in the Bahamas just to enjoy and treat it like vacation. But I wanted to go home because I just moved out by myself and I felt like I had a lot of things to organize and just settling in. On the actual flight home, it was kind of bad because my noise cancelling airpods died halfway through and there was a kid crying and I also touched gum by accident because the previous person didn't clean it I guess. Once I landed in Toronto I was also randomly selected to do a covid test so I had to wait in line for another hour to go through that process. I was really tired by the end of it all but it's always a relief to know that I'm negative and I'm safe, you know, like I'm not affecting the people around me. Anyways, that's the end of my Engage Summit vlog. Hope you guys had fun watching and following along. I'm definitely going to be doing a lot more destination shoots in the upcoming future, so I'll do my best to continue vlogging my journey and I hope you guys will stick around. But yeah, let me know in the comments if you guys have any questions or anything like that and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!
Thank you.